Uh, Mr. Kirby, since this incident in Chicago, um, how's business been at United? Well, sir, while this was a horrible incident that was, was terrible and shameful to all of us at United, uh, for the most part, everything else at United is going really well. Um, that's one of the things that uh, is also disappointing to us uh, because operationally, United is running the best airline in history that we've ever run. Well, how's, Our, how's your, um, um, how are your boardings? You've been, had as many bookings as before? Uh, sir, it, it's, it's impossible for us to see in the data. Okay. Uh, well, how's your, how's your stock been last three weeks since this incident? Uh, our stock initially went down but has recovered since. But our matter of fact, it's higher now than it was the day of the incident. Is that correct? Yes, sir. You know, I, I think, um, what do you think that says? Uh, well, let me try. Stock price? I, I think it says that... You've got the passenger uh, where you want him. Um, I think it says there's not enough competition in the industry, and people that had to fly with United before still have to fly with United if they want to get somewhere. And, and there really is no choice, so business is really back where it was. I, I remarked to my wife when I heard, uh, saw on TV how much the stock had dropped. If, if I didn't mind disclosing it, and if it, I weren't a public official, I would have seen it as a buying opportunity because it was obvious to me that the passenger has nowhere else to go. And so it's not surprising to me that your stock has returned because basically your, um, your boardings are, are going to be about the same. The, if the passenger, if the traveling public wants to boycott United as a result of this uh, outrageous incident, which you say you've corrected. They really don't have a way to boycott you, do they? Uh, sir, there's lots of competition and they have a way to boycott us. I would like to think that our stock recovery is because we truly are going to fix the airline and make customers at the center of everything we do. And that is that commitment uh, that we've adopted is going to help us not only improve for customers, it's going to help us improve for our employees, and that will lead to better results for the shareholders. We absolutely are committed to improving, and our customers do have choice. There's great competition in the U.S. airline industry. Ms. Greenberg, what is your view on that issue? Uh, we, we've got an extremely um, uh, concentrated industry with 80% uh, of flights across the country um, being um, uh, run by four airlines. Uh, that if, is, I, if I fly out of Chicago, um, I, I, I pretty much am, uh, um, there's, there's, there, in, in many instances, there's no place for me to go if I want to boycott United because of this. Is that correct? That's correct. The passengers have, um, just to uh, give you a statistic on that, at 40 of the largest 100 airports, a single airline controls a majority of the market. Um, at a staggering 93 of the top 100 airports, one or two airlines control a majority of seats, an increase from 78 airports in 1995. How are we doing on um, people with disabilities, particularly disabled veterans? Uh, it's my understanding that, that in uh, 2015, 30,000, more than 30,000 passengers filed disability-related complaints with the airlines. And, um, and in 2016, 862 uh, complained directly to the federal government. Uh, in 2015, 944 complained directly to the federal government. Uh, Mr. Uh, Ms. Pinkerton, how, how are the airlines doing in that regard? Well, thank you for asking. That's an issue that we have paid attention to um, in the last couple of years. In fact, the last FAA extension bill that this committee passed had two provisions relating to access for the disabled. Um, um, I sat in on the uh, first issue that was uh, mandated, and that was a GAO study to look at how carriers are training uh, our crew with respect to how they handle wheelchairs, uh, damaged wheelchairs, et cetera. Um, from that, DOT created new training that carriers are incorporated into their own training. Um, but the second issue was that you all required a, a, a rulemaking. 
And that rulemaking um, got underway. It was a negotiated rulemaking. Carriers sat down with the disabled uh, community and DOT and engaged in a negotiated rulemaking. We came up with long-term and short-term solutions. There was agreement. Um, for the long term, we agreed on a larger uh, laboratory um, for single, single aisle um, planes. In the short term, there were three things. It was, again, relating to training and better information, um, both for the disabled community about what their rights were, but also for airline crew. Um, and also, there is a, a, a label that will be put on planes that have um, an international uh, uh, a standard that is like a good housekeeping seal of approval if they meet certain criteria. And with respect, I know uh, Senator Cantwell's not here, but she mentioned the paralyzed um, veterans. Um, we have uh, been ongoing having a dialogue with them. They've asked us not to talk uh, publicly yet about what agreements we are coming to, but I can tell you that those um, conversations are progressing. So uh, my response is that we recognize that this is an issue and we've been taking it seriously, working on it, and I think that things are changing. But if I can, please um, take the opportunity to respond to your concerns about competition because it's a narrative I've heard. Um, and I think, I think the reason the narrative about there's no competition doesn't work is because we've got proof that there's competition. And the proof is, and not according to a Wall Street Journal article, but according to the Bureau of Transportation Statistics, Fares are lower today than they ever have been as a percentage of disposable income. They're down 20% from 1995. We've got more seats added. Small, I think you missed my opening statement, but small and non-hub airports have actually seen increases in seats. We've added a net of 54 new destinations. So, and um, you, you were talking about customer service earlier. The independent studies at J.D. Powers and the American Consumer Satisfaction Index, I think one of the reasons maybe you haven't seen the, 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 the stock change is because people realize that what was, a, what was a completely unacceptable event and should never happen again was extremely rare and is not indicative of the things that our employees serve to the traveling public in the 2.2 million passengers and 27,000 flights we fly every day. Thank you, Senator. Senator 